What's it up, YouTube? Welcome back everyone, this is Lee, and yes, today's today we'll be talking about the Pentax 2040 versus the Sigma 1835. Now, I'll be using the Pentax KP along with the Pentax 2040, and I'll be using a Fuji X-T3 along with the 1835. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is so I could give you guys more data on the Pentax 2040 because there isn't a lot of reviews on this lens. There is no real side by sides out there. So I just wanna do this test for you guys just to show you guys on how good or bad the 2040 is. And I know that the aperture on the Sigma is a wide range, but we'll be using the exact same ranges, F4, 5.6, F8, so on and so forth. And also the exact same focal length on each lens. And so with that said, let it begin. Now the Sigma comes in roughly around 680 USD and yes, they do make a Pentax mount for this lens. So keep that in mind. So those Pentax users, the APS-C, definitely they make this lens for you guys. Now, for the Pentax 2040, it's roughly around 500 USD on sale right now. Usually it looks like it costs around 800 USD. So give or take, basically these two lenses, if they weren't on sale, it's basically gonna be $800 if they weren't on sale right now. So if these weren't on sale, they're equal value. Yeah, that's kind of weird for me to say their equal value. <laughs> but anyways, if you take a look at the elements, definitely the Sigma has more elements than the Pentax. The Sigma has 17 elements, whereas the Pentax has nine elements. They both share nine blades. Now, here's the most interesting part. The Sigma obviously is almost, well, a little over three times heavier than the Pentax. So in terms of compact, lightweight, definitely the Pentax wins. But of course the Sigma has more aperture, so you need more glass. And actually, if you take a look, the Sigma is a lot huger than a Pentax. So that's for something for you guys to know. The more aperture you guys want, the more bigger the lens you'll get. So that is just a pro or con for those people that are deciding on if they are willing to take on the weight and the size versus a compact, lightweight lens. So there you go. Now, let's take a look at some samples. All right, all right, so here's our first test. As you can see on the left is the Pentax, on the right is the Sigma. This is around five o'clock in the afternoon on a clear sky day during summer. And uh, let's take a look. As you can see, I already cropped in already. So this is, let's go 301. Let's take a look at the colors actually. And right there, you can see there's slight chromatic aberration issue, just a hair, no big deal. But for their colors, I would definitely have to give it to the Sigma on this particular scene. The color holds pretty well on the Sigma. The blacks are a lot blacker than the Pentax. The Pentax seems to be a little, I guess, less saturated on the blacks. And yeah, let's take a look at F8. So for F8, I'll have to say, I'll give it to the Sigma. The Sigma looks like it's holding on pretty well. For the Pentax, you could clearly see the slight chromatic aberration on the edges. Whereas the Sigma, there is no chromatic aberration on the edges. So that's something for you guys to know. Around F11, uh, the story remains the same. I will have to give it to the Sigma. The Sigma seems to be uh, producing a better image than the Pentax. The Pentax is um, losing to the sun right there. That's the reflection that's causing this brightness right there. So there you have it. For F16, usually things kind of even up, but uh, for this particular test, I would have to give it to the Sigma. The Sigma is able to retain the dark blacks, whereas the Pentax is losing to the sun and seen for this particular test right here. So, all right, all right. So we are shooting directly at the sun this time and uh, the sun is right there, obviously. And let's take a look at F4. Around F4, you could see that there's flare issues with the Pentax. Um, there seems to be some weird coloring going on with the Sigma. Sigma looks, I don't know, it looks kind of, uh, in my opinion, it looks a little green. But uh, if you look at the background, definitely the Pentax renders the background a lot sharper than the Sigma. The Sigma looks blurred out at F4. Yeah, definitely the Sigma is very blurred out for the background. So that's very interesting. Look at the edges. The Pentax has sharper edges than the Sigma, but definitely the flare is getting in the way for the Pentax to um, be as the same saturation value as the Sigma. So that's just something for you guys to know. But overall, I have to say that the Pentax is holding up in sharpness though. Look at that sharpness right there. Yeah, let's look at 5.6 and here's 5.6. And as you can see, there is that flare right there. But if you look at the Sigma, 
Sigma has this God rays right there. Yeah, look at that God rays right there. And uh, definitely it is making the scene look kind of um, greenish, yellowish. Whereas the Pentax, it's very bluish, very cool. And uh, yeah, just want to let you guys know that. And on the left, I would say that it looks more or less the same. Looks like, actually, nope, the Pentax is slightly sharper than the Sigma. Looking at the ground, definitely the Pentax has more sharpness than the Sigma. Pentax, more sharpness right there. And yeah, wow, that's interesting. Well, wow. let me go back. See, this is kind of weird. Let me go back to uh, F4. Let me see if that God Rays is still there. Okay, so it kind of makes sense a little bit. So there is that slight God Rays right there. So even though you don't see a flare, you will definitely see that Sun Rays right there. Whereas the Pentax, you don't see much of that except the flare right here. So that's something for you guys to know. Now, let's take a look at F8. Wow, already you can see a lot of the God Rays right there. Um, let's um, go in a little closer. Wow, yeah, the Sigma seems to kind of fall apart in this scene right there. Wow, that's pretty interesting. And around F8, it seems like the Sigma's background is a lot sharper than the Pentex background around F8. So that's a change up right there. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the ground. The ground is still a lot sharper on the Pentax. The Sigma seems to be very orangey, yellowish. So that's something for you guys to know. And the bush in the back, uh, the Pentax, wow. Holy moly, the Pentax is able to render on the bush in the back, whereas the Sigma, wow, it's just not, it's not doing it correctly. It's getting interrupted by the sun. So there you have it. Definitely the Pentax do have some special sauce in this limited series lens. Let's take a look at F11. Whoa, okay. F11 seems like the sun rays right there is, is more, uh, yeah is more in the way right now. <laughs> All right, so I'll have to say the Pentex wins on this one. Yeah, the Pentex definitely wins on this one. The only thing that's pushing the Sigma back is this ray right there. It's not handling the sun that well. So definitely I'll have to give it to the Pentex. Wow, yeah, look at the background. And let's take a look at this area right here. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, definitely the, the rays right there is really interrupting the image right here. So I guess it depends on the person's taste. If you guys want more sun rays in your shots, you might want to get the Sigma. But for people that don't want too much rays in their shots, definitely the Pentax seems to render the scene quite nicely. Here is F16 and whoa, you can see that huge sun rays right here. This is pretty, in my honest opinion, this is pretty bad. But uh, yeah, this F16 right there. The Pentax is, uh, Rendering a lot better than the Sigma, that's for sure. Uh, the story remains the same. The background for the Sigma is more saturated than the Pentax. Um, let's take a look at the bush right there. And uh, yeah. And yeah, things seems to be evening out pretty much, but uh, definitely the sun rays on the Sigma is pretty bad. It is pretty bad. All right, for this next test, this is the bokeh and also the center sharpness test. On the left is the Pentax, on the right is the Sigma, and already right off the bat, you can see that the Pentax is slightly closer, but that doesn't matter because the Pentax seems to have focusing breathing issues. The images on the Sigma looks a lot bigger than the Pentax, so that's something for you guys to know. If you look at the center sharpness, I will have to give it to the Sigma. Definitely the Sigma has the slider edge just because of the focus and breathing issues. So that's something for you guys to know. Let's look at the Boca. They both share the same amount of blades and more or less, they look the same to me. Nothing too crazy. Here is 5.6. The sharpness, 
It looks like the Pentax might be a hair sharper there, but uh, yeah, give or take, we're just pulling hairs right here. Uh, for this portion right here, it's a lot sharper, but uh, that could be the focusing breathing issue that's, ha that's helping that situation out. But uh, yeah, this is something for you guys to know. But overall, they look quite identical. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, definitely the focusing breathing is going to give you a different depth of feel. So just keep that in mind. So here's F11 already, as you can see. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it looks, both of them look really identical, to be quite honest. And even the Boca looks more or less the same. There's no real difference on the Boca. The Boca looks very identical right there. So I think we're just pulling hairs at this point. But yeah, definitely they do seem to be quite similar. Um, just that the focus breathing on the Pentax seems to be very evident in this test, so yeah. So just to wrap things up, in my honest opinion, looking at these two lenses and looking at the image quality, I mean, these two lenses are two different kind of lenses pretty much. I mean, the Pentax is a lot compact, whereas the Sigma is a lot bigger, a lot heavier, but it has the widest aperture range. So with that said, I think it depends on the shooter, what they're looking for. Are they looking for travel? Are they looking for, you know, videography? Because definitely the Sigma 1835 is pretty big in the video world. So with that in mind, definitely leave your comments down below. I would love to know what you guys think because I'm, I'm having a hard time to actually tell you guys which one is the better one because I cannot imagine myself using the 1835 as a walk around lens on a daily. And uh, that's just kind of different user experience when you're using such a big bulky lens, such as the Sigma for photography. But I know some people do use that lens for photography, but with the Pentax, it was a lot lighter. It was, you know, easy for me to maneuver around to get my shots. I don't necessarily need to shoot wide open all the time at 1.8. I think that's just something for those folks out there that want the Boca. If you're looking for Boca and that's all you're shooting is Boca, definitely get the Sigma. But with that said, thank you guys for checking me back. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely click like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the merch store. And yep, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, take it easy. Peace.